Hey guys, Karen here, and welcome to another episode of Freedom Investor TV. Uh, this week, I am coming to you from Rabat in Morocco, and this has been, you know, it's my first time in Africa. Really exciting. Uh, I would just want to give you a, a quick look. I'm at our workspace, and this is a traditional. I can't remember Moroccan name, but it's basically a tent. But it's all hand woven from goat hairs. How cool is that? And you can see some of the remote workers that I'm with over here. And if I just run, I'm going to give you a quick look at the river. Unfortunately, we're near a factory of some sort, meaning there's a bit of background noise. But check that out. That's pretty cool. So this is Morocco and I've got to admit it's a lot more western than I was expecting. We were uh, given an idea of what it was going to be like and we got told you know brace yourselves but to be honest it's it's very much just like Bangkok but full of Arab or Moroccan people rather than Asians. It's, um, it's quite cool. So I wanted to start doing my videos a little bit differently and I've said thank you to everyone who put in the feedback and told me what they wanted to get out of it. So what I'm going to do starting with this video is I'm going to make each video one step in the entire investing story. So if you're watching this video now, this is going to be the very first thing you need to do when it comes to investing and next video, the next week's video will lead on from here. So what is the theme of today's video? It's knowing why you're going to be investing in the first place. Hey guys, Tyron here and welcome to London, the east coast of Copenhagen, the Netherlands. And I am coming to you from Vilnius. Uh, we're in Cordoba now and this is Freedom Investor TV. Okay, so you've decided it's time to invest. You want to start getting some properties. What's the first thing you should do? It's go and find a house, right? Wrong! No, that is not the first thing to do. The first thing you need to do is identify. You need to identify what your whole purpose of investing is and why you even want to be buying a property in the first place. For example, if you're in an absolutely fantastic job, you really love it and you want to keep working in there, you're going to come take a completely different strategy and I have a completely different purpose for investing than say a husband and wife pair with two children who are trying to get either one or both of them out of working in the corporate world as quickly as possible. <clears throat> so the first thing you need to do is identify what your investing is going to give you. Are you just trying to get more free cash in order to go out and have some awesome holidays? Are you trying to get yourself out of a rat race? Are you trying to minimize the number of days you're working but you still want to continue working? Are you wanting to go around the world on a year-long holiday and then come back to work? All of these sorts of things are the very first thing you need to think about because without it, you're just going to start accumulating properties. And to be honest, this is what most investors do. Most investors just start accumulating properties and somewhere along the way they go, oh, maybe I should start reading some books. They only get to a position that the assets they have acquired will allow them to be rather than knowing where they want to be and then buying the assets which are going to allow them to get there. Let me rephrase it all. If I was to ask you what a good deal is, what would you say? In fact, leave a comment below of what you would consider a good deal. And what we're gonna to start to see is we're going to start to see a whole completely different range of things. Reason being, what I consider a good deal is going to be completely different to what you consider a good deal because we're investing for different reasons. This is the problem with a lot of modern day real estate agents when they advertise that something would make a good investment. Because the reality is, from my side of things, at least 95% of properties which say good investment opportunity would not be a good investment. Okay, so once you've identified why you're buying, 
or what your purpose of your investing is, it's time to put a monetary value on that. How much does that goal actually mean? So again, if you're looking to, let's say you want to quit your job all up, how much money do you need to be making passively in order to quit your job? Now, I want to challenge you for a minute. A lot of people start coming up with some big high number. You know, the, actually the most common one is 100,000. And initially my one was 100,000 too. Let me ask you a question. Uh, one, are you currently earning $100,000 per year? And two, do you really need to? The first place to start is just simply replacing your current income. If you're on 40,000, if you're on 80,000, whatever, just start by focusing on your current income. How can you replace that? Now there's two ways you can replace it. The first way is through passive income. This is building up the amount of passive income you're getting each year until the point you hit that number. Now the second way is to have that cash in the bank. For example, if you wanted to make $80,000, you could go out and trade and you could make $80,000 after tax through trading properties. Now, if you really hated your job, you would actually now be in a position where you could, autom you could slowly what, do what I call a automatic funds release. Meaning, if you've got 80,000 in the bank, that's the same as you working for an entire year, right? If you slowly release that to you, week by week by week, in exactly the same way you would have got paid as if you're going to work, you've now just bought a year of your time. This gives you an entire year where you're getting paid the same amount of money in order to go out and do property full time. Now the catch is you've got this entire year to go out and actually remake that money back plus more. But I mean, let's look at it this way. If you can make $80,000 whilst working in a job, imagine how much more money you're going to be able to make if you're not working at all. So that's another strategy. So you've got to figure out one, why you're investing, and two, what is your monetary value? Three, how you're going to do it. Now again, if you just want to go on a holiday, you might want $30,000 to go on a holiday. It's going to be an awesome holiday, but you know, you might have a big family, whatever, splurge on yourself. Again, put a number on it, what you're trying to achieve. So those are the three tasks you need to do, leave a comment below or join the Facebook group, which is even better. And I'd love to hear what are those three things for you? One, what are you trying to achieve? Two, what is the monetary value? And three, how are you going to achieve that? I'll catch you next week where I'll still be in Morocco, uh, but I'll be in a different city then, hopefully hopefully with some camels. Next week, I'm going to be helping you figure out what the best strategy is for you in order to achieving your goal. Cheers, guys. So I did, without knowing anything, I went and I bought it. Now, that turned out to be kind of a massive mistake. In fact, it's the worst investment property I've ever owned. Hi, my name's Phil. Um, working with Corin has been fantastic in terms of uh, opening my mind, um, thinking outside of the square, and um, uncovering multiple opportunities.